This was yesterday. This is happening today. Saturn S1C has moved from drawing board design to pilot fabrication. NASA's Marshall Center is responsible for development of the S1C booster stage of the Saturn V vehicle. The Boeing Company is the contractor for the booster. Development of manufacturing techniques consistent with reliability requirements, state-of-the-art advancements, and feasible production capabilities is a joint responsibility. Basically, the S1C booster is a tandem tank configuration. With the oxidizer tank on top and enter tank structure next, then the fuel tank assembly above and attached to the thrust structure, which supports the fens, base structures, and the five F1 engines. The first static test of the booster is scheduled for October 1964. Pilot fabrication of the huge tank bulkheads is now underway. Six basic jigs or stations have been developed to perform this operation. Openings required for fittings are first cut and fittings installed. Then the apex and base parts of each gore section are trimmed. Next, the apex and base sections are welded together to form a gore segment. The gore is then trimmed and routed or grooved on each side for weld to other sections. Next, all gore sections are welded together trimmed, and the bulkhead assembly completed. Next operation is closure of the bulkhead. Utilizing this tooling, the Manufacturing Engineering Division at Marshall is presently performing pilot fabrication. Advantage of this manufacturing process can be depicted by following a bulkhead fabrication sequence through the six stations. Previous bulkhead fabrication techniques on smaller tank components utilized a movable jig, which traveled under a stationary weldhead. This approach was impractical for elliptical bulkheads of large diameters. Here we see an apex segment of a gore section being positioned on the Station 1 fixture. Both tooling and bulkhead segments are fabricated by Boeing at Wichita. The first operation is installation of various propellant line fittings as required. Here we see a cutout for a fixture. These fittings, short conical sleeves, are used for structural support of propellant suction tunnels. The bulkhead components are handled by overhead cranes, which traverse the area over all jig stations. The fixtures were designed by Marshall Center and fabricated to MSFC specifications by Boeing. This fixture consists of a gantry and a dolly. The gantry suspends a rotating carriage over the weld area. This carriage is being positioned in preparation for trimming and routing the cutout in preparation for welding operations. The carriage supports both cutting and weld head, which may be attached without removal of the carriage. The bulkhead section is anchored to the fixture by a hydraulic hold-down system. In accordance with the original manufacturing plan, Initial operations will be accomplished at Marshall with pilot operations, followed by fabrication of ground test stages and the first flight vehicle. This effort will include partial fabrication and assembly of the S1CT, the first static firing stage, S1CD, a dynamic test stage, and one flight vehicle. All machine and fabrication techniques and procedures developed and proved feasible and reliable at Marshall will be utilized at Michu in production fabrication of the S1C. All jigs and equipment will be transferred to Michu for use by Boeing in the production phase of the program after Marshall phases out of the S1C program. Fusion welding of the structural components that comprise the propellant containers is accomplished automatically by both mechanical and electronic controls. Weld thickness at fitting locations vary from two-tenths to eight-tenths of an inch, depending upon the size of the fitting. After welding is completed on each section, the segment is removed and subjected to X-ray inspection, then transported to the cleaning facility. The part is age-formed, where the weld distortion is corrected. The apex core segment is then cleaned and a coating of iridite 14 2 
or Aladine 1200 is applied. Next, the apex segment and the base segment of a gorse section are prepared for welding. This operation is accomplished on the Station 2 fixture, which actually comprises two jigs, one for the apex segment as shown here, and one for the base segment. In this view, the depressions on the jig can be noted clearly. Vacuum affected at each of these points holds the material in place, but does not bind the material to the jig as tightly as hold-down clamps and allows the weld area to move. Thus, the term soft tooling is applied. This section, the bottom of the apex segment, is being trimmed. The edges, apex and base segments, are cut into a concave or a convex shape to allow a tongue and groove type joint. The concave section is approximately six hundredths of an inch deep. This fixture is used with the base segment of the gore section. Vacuum locations are evident. Here, the base segment is being positioned on the jig preparatory to final trimming of the base line. Trimming and routing operations are performed by tooling that travels on a fixed track, which is a part of the fixture, assuring the same cut or routing on each segment. Next, the apex and base segments will be welded into a gore section assembly. This operation is accomplished on the apex to base weld fixture, or station number three. This fixture consists of three sections. An overhead support holds the weld head and track for the unit to travel over. A two-part dolly type fixture utilizing vacuum hold-down positioning systems holds the gore segments. This approach, extensively used at MSFC called soft tooling, will be utilized at Michoud wherever practical. The apex segment is being positioned for welding. After positioning, the fixture is locked. Next, the base segment is positioned and locked. The two parts of the dolly platform are attached, forming an integral unit. This platform is tilted, allowing the immediate weld area to remain in an uphill position. This method precludes running or pooling of the weld material. Welds are made with single passes of the head. The weld track follows the contour of the head assembly, but the proximity of the head to work surface does not depend on the accuracy of the track. This is accomplished by an electronic sensing device, which compensates for variations in curvature of the work surface and proximity of the weld head to the part. Rate of travel of the weld head, angle of attack, and other control aspects are programmed and monitored electronically. This provides a system that effectively reduces human error and provides a high degree of reliability. Next, the gore sections are positioned on the bulkhead gore trim and route fixture. This is station number four. Here, the section is trimmed to meridian trim lines, then routed on both sides. One side of the section is routed concave and the other convex, which allows a tongue and groove fitting between sections. The gore sections used in this pilot fabrication are of 2219 aluminum, the same material which will be used in all test and production boosters. The entire portion of the gore is held down by vacuum, thereby holding the part in position until the operation is complete. After trimming, the gore is removed and placed on the bulkhead assembly jig, station number five, where the eight gore sections are joined together to form the bulkhead. This fixture consists of a 396 inch diameter turntable clamping device, a 17 foot tall center pedestal, and a vacuum chuck, the size of two side by side gores, joining the pedestal to the ring. Assembly of a bulkhead begins with two gore sections being positioned upon the vacuum chuck. The sections fit together with a tongue and groove joint. The weld head, suspended from a curved arm, makes a meridian butt weld along the joint of the two gores, starting at the base and moving up and on an elliptical path. The head makes a single pass to weld the two gores together, and weld thickness will vary between two-tenths and eight-tenths of an inch. After a pass, the head will be swung out of the way and the welded seam x-rayed. The weld head travels on an overhead track and is controlled by a similar system used at station number three where the segments are welded together. After one weld joint is completed and x-ray accepted, the turntable is rotated, 
positioning the next gore section joint and the weld process repeated until all eight gores have been welded together to form the bulkhead. The base of the bulkhead will be trimmed and the entire section moved to station number six, the centerpiece trim and weld fixture. This centerpiece fixture performs cutout, final trim, and weld operations to install the 54-inch disc of aluminum alloy in the bulkhead center. The center disc closes the top of the bulkhead. This jig consists of a center pedestal and eight support arms. The bulkhead is lowered over the pedestal onto the arms. After this operation, the bulkhead is returned to station five, where the wiring is welded to the base section of the bulkhead. Tooling has felt the influence of a team effort in design, fabrication, and installation. Since Marshall Space Flight Center had several months lead on Boeing and tool development, ME Division tool designers laid ground rules in development then worked out the major design concepts in the area of bulkhead fabrication. Joint effort is not an abstract term in the relationship between MSFC and the Boeing Company. It is an evident truth. The S-1C stage will be a result of the best efforts of the Marshall Boeing team.